I'd like to say welcome to everybody. I used to think that it was real funny to walk out before a crowd and then miss a step and fall. And I thought about doing that right there. But I thought I'd probably break my leg. <laughs> so I decided not to do it. <laughs> my father-in-law one time, we were in a end of the year meeting. It was a watch night service. And it was a big deal with him on watch night services. Every year, I mean, they lasted from like 6 o'clock to 1 o'clock practically. And my father-in-law had, uh, had this uh, gospel group. I forgot the name of them. They, the Sullivans. And, uh, uh, and he was, of course, he was always just tensed up and everything. And, and he would plan the whole service and all that. And, and uh, not necessarily with who was going to say anything, but he'd have different parts, you know, planned out. And just tense as he could be. And so in the midst of the singing well everybody got happy and they were all just you know praising the lord and everything he's walking back and forth and he had this little old little old step up that went to the uh stage yeah and it was about it wasn't quite as high as this right here or maybe it was but that little step up always just kind of stood out about maybe uh six to eight inches or so and he was walking out across there just tense as he could be, hit that thing and tripped and landed right on his face. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I was sitting on the front seat and I thought, and I did not move. And I thought, if I get up and help him, I'm going to embarrass him to death. And he'll, he'll just chew me out for embarrassing him to death. So I just sat right there and laughed the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> and we laughed for the lovers about that. But those things happen. They happen and they're uh uh they're they're fond remembrances, I suppose. I was thinking about this morning I was asking my wife, we used to have a little box around the house and it was one of these little toy like things and and the little box had a hole in it and had a battery in it and this guy was in the box. And the guy was, you'd hit the box, and, and the guy would say, excuse me, you remember that? Excuse me. Uh, and what was the next? Get me out of here. Get me out of here. You remember that little box, the yeah. thing? Excuse me, excuse me, get me out of here. Yeah. Well, I have, uh, I have taken that little box and looked at it and held it all around. I said, well, there isn't any doorway in there. <laughs> And no way. You know, you know how you do things? You're always looking for an opening into something. And especially kids growing up, we're always trying to figure out how things work. You know, how do you get into this thing or that or this? And uh, if you've ever locked yourself out of a car, you know how it feels. Because you can sit there and walk around and, and think, now how can I get in this thing? And there is no way. There is no one. Yeah. And uh, you can agonize and you can try to figure out. I was over at my mother's house and I locked myself out of my truck. I hadn't got one of those electric door locks on that thing. And, uh, but, uh, and I just stood around and I thought, well, there isn't but one avenue. Had to call the lock, lock guy. That hurts every time you do that. That's 25, 35 bucks. And, uh, I said, well, I'm not going to ever do that again. I'm going to hide a key somewhere yeah. <laughs> where I can get in the door. <laughs> you know, keys cost like rip these days. <laughs> I mean, they don't sell them cheap. They don't, they won't start your vehicle. Yeah. You got to have this little, some kind of deal in the key or something yeah. before it'll start your vehicle. Right. But you can get one that will open the door. Right. I got one that opens the door and I hit it on the truck. Of course, every thief that comes along, you know, you're not getting away with anything with a thief. <laughs> He'd know exactly where you put it. <laughs> but I say all this to say, when you're standing around outside of your truck, or you're standing around outside of your car, you're standing around outside of your house and you've locked yourself out. 
Yeah. How? You can't get in. I mean, you, you've got, you're out. Yeah. And it's, it's a pitiful feeling. Well, the Lord said in John 10 and 7, 8, and 9, He says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. Amen. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Amen. He's the doorway. That's right. Over in John the 14th chapter and the 8th verse, I believe, 6th <coughs> and 7th verses, it says, Jesus saith unto him, to Thomas, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. The Father being Almighty God, thinking of Almighty God in that sense. Christ was the Father also. But He was the manifestation of the Almighty God in the world. He was seen in the world. You cannot see God is a spirit and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. You are spirit and uh, blood and uh, water. The Scripture says blood and water. You are blood and water, but you're also spirit. And that blood and water means flesh and flesh and blood. And But you cannot see Spirit. You can see personalities to some extent by the expressions of people and their their ways and how they do. That's their spirit. Right. That's their spirit. Right. God is the spirit of life of every man Thank you, Lord. and woman in this world. Amen. He breathed the breath of life into that form in the beginning, and we have transferred it down through time, through having children over and over, generation after generation after generation. Yeah. And but you cannot see him because he's he's just like somebody's personality. You you can't see other than being able to see their expressions. You can't see that that life. That's the life of them. Right. And so I got a little bit off my track here, I guess. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. If you had known me, you should have known my Father also. Yeah. And from henceforth, from this time forward, yeah. you know Him and have seen Him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you've seen the Father. Thank if you you've seen Him, you've seen the Father. Well, back to my point. My point is, there are many people who are standing outside of a locked door and they can't find their way in. I had a, a good friend several years back who passed away. And before he passed away, he said, have I done everything that I possibly could? And I, I feel like I knew this man's background and I feel like he did not do everything that he possibly could. Another man that I you question these things when you get to the end of life. You say, well, have I done everything that I possibly can? Is there anything else that I can possibly do yeah. to prepare for dying? Right. To prepare for eternity? And even the worst of men. And this man, had he had said, well, what else can I do? It seems like I'm standing outside of a locked door. I can't get in. I can't get in. Yeah. You see, Jesus is the doorway. He's the entrance way into the plan of God. If you feel like you can't move any way with God, get down to business with Jesus Christ. Now here's, here's the secret. The secret is in baptism in Jesus' name. It is the circumcision of the Spirit. It's the circumcision of your spirit. And it allows you to enter through the doorway and then get into a place where you can move up in God if you want to. If you just continually stand on the outside, you'll, you'll never find the key to the door. 
You'll say, well, how can I get in? I'm going to try to get in. Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> but there's, and he's the secret. You know, how, how do you believe in him? Do you just believe? Uh, well, I believe he lived. I believe he lived. Everybody can say that. Yeah. Belief is much more than all that. Belief yeah. is Trust. part of you. Yeah. It becomes part of you. Right. It becomes what you are. Yeah. You're a believer. Amen. You're a believer. Amen. And He changes you and He makes a new creature out of you. What the old man was, you're different. You know you are. You know you are. At one point in my life, I cursed and blackguarded and did all kinds of things. That was a pattern in my life. And, uh, and I did not know how to stop it. There wasn't any answer. I was trying to find it on my own. You can't find it on your own. You can't save yourself by your own strength, by your own spirit. You have to come to Christ and let Him open the doorway yes. to your heart. And then He can give you the strength to live by. Praise God. Praise God. Get through the doorway. And you, you'll, this is the entrance way, and then you can move up in God and become what you should be in life and have eternal life. Most valuable thing in the world. Yes. These children, I love them all. I yeah. love them all. Yes. And they got life standing for them. And right. Never sick. You know, they got these little afflictions like coughing. Coughing, colds, flu. Those are little things. Uh, when to get to my stage of the game, the left leg quits working. Yeah. <laughs> the, the hearing quits in one ear. Uh, you can't walk like you used to walk. You can just jump fences when you were little. JC, he's like a wild man when he's around my house. And, and, and energy like nobody's business, but I don't have the energy anymore like I used to. They got life. Yes. And this is what we're talking about, but it's a life beyond yes. what you understand and know and all you can't know in this Thank world. Jesus. Unbelievable life. Thank Hallelujah. Jesus. Is eternal life with Thank Jesus Christ.